Welcome to Into the Mind of Music. My guest today is a keyboardist who never seems to run out of ideas. He can write songs in any genre, rock, jazz, blues, Latin, pop, you name it, he can write it. He's a music educator. He played in a band with Harry Leahy, who is a Grammy-winning artist with the Phil Woods Quartet. He's the creative writing force behind the band On The Edge. My good friend and music mentor, Vincent Partisi. We have developed a connection over the years. I'll never forget playing a gig with you and Joey Bellia from The Weaklings. Um, and uh, we were in the middle of, of the song and you told me go to the bridge. But it wasn't four beats yet, but I, I said, John said go to the bridge. I'm going to the bridge. Go to the bridge. That's, that's it. <laughs> One, follow two, three. Me. There we follow go. John. I followed you right into that bridge and we both went off the bridge, back on the bridge. But this is the, the joy of music. Um, it's something that a lot of people never experience. It's, it's the, well, it's accolade, you know, but it's, it's not a money gig. I mean, you know, if you're commercially acceptable, and I think, frankly, young enough, uh, in today's market anyway, you, you, can, you can try to, to make a lot of money. But the inner peace and, and philosophies of music that I've learned all my life, uh, uh, they outweigh the money, you know. I was very fortunate to have a company that taught children which I still have. It's called Clef Notes Music uh, at C L E F, clefnotesmusic.com. And for anybody everybody, out there. Excuse me just for one second, but for anybody that's watching this, I'm going to try to put all of these links um, that Vinny is talking about so that you can get in touch with him um, in the bottom when I post the video. So I'll post a bunch of links down there that you can uh, reach Mr. Portizi at. That would be great, John. Uh, yeah, and then they can get to um, you know cleft note music. But let's let's talk about that. Let's continue to talk about what is cleft note music. So um, I needed a gig. <laughs> uh, you know, I could a uh, very good player playing with good players, uh, but I had kind of gotten away a little bit from being in all the nightclubs after my son was born. Uh, you know, because I had a different philosophy at that time which was to raise the kids, you know? And um, so I got into writing and composing, but I needed a day, day job. So I was, I was teaching in Catholic schools for another man named Rick Perini. Uh, Rick Perini had a hell of a life too. I don't, uh, if he's out there somewhere, I don't Rick. Um, he was the mayor of Manville. He had a lot of different things. He, he actually replaced Harry. When Harry would go on the road with Phil Woods, this band, Rick Perini, would come in and play guitar and saxophone in the band. Wow. So after playing with him, um, he asked me, do I teach? I says, well, sure, I know enough to, you know, I can teach. I, went, I, I did go to some college, but I didn't finish because I kept getting calls <laughs> to go out on the road. It was a lot more exciting. You know, I have to say about uh, music education in college, uh, you know, I've, I've been a musician 45 years, whatever it's been professionally and nobody ever asked me how many children Bach had you know or you know in other words some of the stuff that you must complete has nothing to do with being a composer or a player but I did take composition and then the, uh what was his name Dave Sebesky uh Sebesky. in New York they had the, Don right, Sebesky. Sebesky Don Sebesky thank yeah. you he had some courses going on in New York yeah, about songwriting they used to talk about form writing Listen to a song, and if you know about, enough about music, listen to the song. The A section was a one, four, five. The B section went to a minor, relative minor. Then you went back to the A section, and then you would hit them with a C. So I learned a lot more about arrangement and like you know, putting songs together in a coherent way. Um, but I've always had ideas. So uh, I started working for Rick in the Catholic schools. And after a couple of years, you have to realize I'm pretty old. I'm, we're, we're, not you, John, of course, but I myself am quite old. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> no, I'm just saying. <clears throat> age is, you know, it's all in your mind. Yeah, but, it's not age, it's stage, you know, so. That's right. It's, it's the old wine joke, right? I mean, the wine only gets better. If I'm you 26. If you store it the right way. 
I'm 26. <laughs> you know what I mean? I flipped the numbers. I'm 26. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. And um, so, you know, I had to make a living. So I was teaching for Rick and he wanted to put, ready for this, Commodore 64 computers into the Catholic schools. Wow. That's how, all right. So, um, and for those younger people out there, this was in the days of Pong and Atari, the, the right. tennis, boom, 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 boom. And I couldn't boom, do it anyway. I sucked at that. <laughs> Boy, did I suck at that. I was pretty good at Pac-Man, but this is the, the era, okay? For those, if you want to judge the era by what video games were out, there you go, Pac-Man. It just <laughs> came out. <laughs> we used to play it on break at, in the lounge. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They used yeah. to have the table. It was a table. <laughs> it sat at the table. Yeah, 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 drink, yeah. And there was a screen in the center of the table, and it had Pac-Man. Yeah. And it had Black that and white, ping though. pong right. thing. And it had another right, space, space Invaders. That was my yes, favorite. Yes, with the thing. <laughs> yeah, with the right little out. arrow. You know, with the little the arrow. arrow. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. I think they should bring them back. Yeah. You know. Well, but, there uh, are retro places. Like my friend has a has a has a retro video game bar, someplace really? in, in one of the boroughs, and and he has those tables, and he has the original. Not bar. a bad idea. Pretty good idea. I mean, just because you get older doesn't mean you don't want to, you know, play. Yeah. In fact, uh, I could just share one thing with you. One time we talked about that with Harry. And, uh, we, you know, the thing about playing with him again, not to go back to it a million times, but he then recommended for me to go study with uh, Mike Melillo, who was the pianist in the Philwoods Quartet from Italy. And he wasn't accepting any students. So you had to be recommended, which is kind of like how all the big teachers were. You know, I know that you study with Jaka. I mean, and you had to probably have a little recommendation to get in with them. Well, or at least no, I did. not really. I just had to have, Jocko, money. I just had to have money, you know, at that time, Jocko needed uh, money. So it was like, uh, you know, if you had money and you had the inside scoop, because, oh uh, yeah, you know, you know, you had to have the inside scoop to know where he was. That was about it. So I had the inside story. <laughs> you had, anyway, you, well, you, you always have had, you've always had that sweet smart. So I'll tell you, yeah. I've learned a lot from you on, on those regards. And um, wow. so uh, what happened was, you know, he would tell me, he would say, look, you know, the day you die, you should be playing the better than the day before. That, you, you know, age, age has nothing to do, what well, has everything to do with musical proficiency because you should play better every day or at least always look to grow. It, you, no one knows it all. You know, I know a lot of theory and a lot of, a lot of stuff about music, but believe me, I'm always captivated when you go back to the classics or go back not only to the classical composers as far as the pianist, but just go back even to classic rock and listen more closely to the songs. You know, when we heard them when we were teenagers, they sounded one way, but now, I think maybe even because of enhanced fidelity, you know, I mean, uh, just enhanced uh, ability to hear everything. There's so much more going on on those records, you know, that than I ever really heard through my transistor radio, you know. So uh, they, they too, they're the great masters. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Beatles, the Stones, uh, just to name a few, Zeppelin, great writers, you know, the Who. I mean, they wrote the whole Tommy, a rock opera. What a, I mean, the, the creativity of, crazy creativity it was uh, I, I i really believe it was a golden era of music that we were part of as young men and um so what happened was uh, i talked to rick and he wanted to buy these commodore 64 computers and he wanted to get out of teaching music in the schools so i bought from him on the death of my dad my father had passed about in 1984 and um my son was one year old and I says, well, you know, I'm going to take a chance on this and I'm going to buy him out of the school. So I gave him some money. Uh, he let me pay him off on time. Really nice cat. And I started teaching Catholic schools. Well, I had a knack for, um, I had a knack for uh, the gift of gab as a couple of my, and I, I ended up going from six schools to about 60. And, um, I, 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 I like to say I used to smooth with the nuns. Um, I went to Catholic school for 12 years and I wasn't afraid of them. See, I, I, I actually, I actually really enjoyed, um, a lot of my relationships. Okay. I'm just going to come right out on your podcast, say with, with these nuns, 
these nuns were, they taught me a lot about life because that's why they call them nuns. They got nothing. There are no possession, no material, but everything's paid for. They eat well. <laughs> a lot of them are a little chubby. <laughs> anyway. That's all they do is have eat, eat. That's their No, oh, they're good cooks. Sister Antoinette. Hey, we won't, go, we won't go into what their pleasures are, but um, food must be one of them. <laughs> None food food is, none. is the only pleasure that I know of. All right. So you know what? I never <laughs> thought of that. Nuns. They have nothing. Yeah, is, they have nothing. Is, that's really what that is. Huh? That's that's actually the uh, that's vernacular. Pretty. That's why they call them nuns. Otherwise they're actually called sisters. They're the sisters of charity or the sisters of the convent station. Anyway, so I, I became successful uh, in this teaching and I hired friends of mine. I hired a man who you know, Larry Barbie, way back. 30 some years ago to te help me teach. He was a graduate of Berkeley. And through the years, I've had dozens of people come in and out. Brian Glassman, great bass player, Matt Jardine. Uh, I just recently connected with a lot of these people again on Facebook. Um, Tom Langmack, who has a brother uh, that plays also. Anyway, and it went well. I had children and the children I was teaching was the age of my children. So it was just, um, I learned a lot. The kids taught me a lot. And let me say something to all those young parents out there. Be, beware of this. Whatever you say to each other in the back room or in the kitchen or when the kids watch the TV. <laughs> I know where you're going with this, man. God, he's going to tell his teacher. So, he's going to go in school, in case you don't know by now, and he's going to tell his teacher what you're saying. <laughs> I got dirt on a lot of people. <laughs> I heard my One time mommy it, praying last night. Ah, oh, no, my I don't want, God. oh my yeah, God. No, I don't. <laughs> what, what part of your body goes to heaven first? Well, your feet. <laughs> you know, one time I'm teaching these, this kid, and, and they didn't practice, you know. I mean, they practiced a lot more 30 years ago than they do now, but they didn't have, you No, know, when Nintendo came out, that was like, or automatically I expected like half of my students because I just couldn't get them to spend enough time anymore. But nonetheless, they tell you a lot of stories. One time the kid wasn't practicing, a little girl. And uh, I says, what's the matter? You know, you're not practicing, what's going on? I teach like um, a mafia figure, okay? To little children, it's very, very funny. I talk to them, I don't talk down to them. I don't say, oh, Natalie, what's, I don't say that, I go, what's going on? Yeah, and the kids are much smarter than people think. Let me tell you, your children are very smart. So she says, well, I can't practice uh, the piano right now because the keyboard is at my grandmother's house. I says, oh. I says, well, what happened there? Why, what happened? She says, well, mommy had $5,000. And then daddy came, daddy took it and went away. And now mommy doesn't have any more money. So I'm living with my grandmother. <laughs> I says, well, go get the keyboard from your house and bring it to your grandmother so you can still practice. it. So um, anyway, I can have a lot, of, a lot of stories with the children. But in the meantime, while well, I use that to make a living, and I must say I'm thankful to the Lord, uh, it was good living. I mean, I, I had a very nice house, uh, all kinds of stuff. I put both of my, I had a daughter in 1990, Kristen. They both went through college. And I did that thing, that thing that you do. During that time, however, I came out with my first jazz composition CD, which was called Stories. I, don't I know knew, if you see I that knew it was Partisi Project, but I didn't. I didn't right. I formed story. a band called Here's Me when I was very young. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, young man. Back, young man. And um, so I, I had uh, some very good musicians. Alex Asia was a bass player. Uh, Andrew Rubo on drums, Ray Miller on guitar, a guy named Tom Sharkey on the bass. And um, we put together this album, Stories. And it was a labor of love, but I was young and I had fire. I went out to LA and this was in the time when the Rippingtons were a big band and the Yellow Jackets, okay, Spyro Gyra. So if you ask me what happened to my influences, after I got into jazz and learned the Bud Powell and all, you know, the things what Mike would teach me when I went to those lessons for a couple, I went to saw him for a couple of years with lessons every couple of weeks. So it was pretty steady. And I had all this knowledge now in my head. 
but I was not listening to Miles anymore. I was listening to Spira Gyra and, you know, the Yellow Jackets, Russell Ferrante, uh, Dave Koz, Jeff Lord Refusion. Of course, Chicory Electric Band, Chicory Acoustic yeah. Band, right? Bob and James. Herbie, and... Bob James, Taxi Theme, right? Yeah. So my writing started to project that what you, what you take in is what you put out, see? You, like, I'm not really good at writing um, some things. Like, I don't think I would be very good at writing rap type music because it, it's not in, you know? You have to have it in before it come back out. And, and the whole idea is to kind of have the, the uh, whenever I used to listen to music, the difference between me, I think why people are great players or, and or great writers has to do with how they look at the tune. A lot of people look at the tune, I want to learn, I want to be able to play exactly like Jimmy Page did it. But other people look at it like, why did he do that? You know, not the fact that he did that or learning to do it, but why did he do it? Well, because that mode was the perfect Dorian scale inside of that solo. You know, like listening to Kashmir. I mean, the actual notes that, of that song, as an example, I think are mostly in Locrian mode. I mean, it's like a stranger sound. And, and you could get all the sounds you want out of the eight basic modes and, of course, the, the um, add-ons to those, like Locrian Sharp 2, you know, Flat 5. So I really got into that because I was teaching little kids, so I really couldn't use any of that knowledge. You know, I wasn't going to teach them the Locrian yeah, scale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're eight. Yeah, eight years old. Yeah. So that's where this came out. And um, I, I uh, went... Uh, this is like the big story of my life. So here we go. So I go out to California and I met with the manager of the Rippingtons. And I sat in her office. Her name was Andy Howard with this CD. And she listened to it all the way through. Never spoke. She loved it. On that day in 1996, maybe it was, she called Chick Corea in New York. I was, here I am coming from the New York area to California. Chick was back in this area, starting his label. Um, oh, it escapes me what the name of Chick's label was that he was starting. Spire or Squire Records or something like that. I can't remember, so edit that out. Anyway, um, she actually called him on the phone and said, I have a guy that's writing some really good shit. And, um, you know, I wonder if you, know, you might want to use him with your new label. So then she told me that, in order for me to pursue this dream, I would have to move to LA because she wanted me to actually play with some of the bands that she managed, which included the Rippingtons and other bands. She knew Jeff Lorber and all those. So it was a real moment uh, coming out of her office in LA where I tell you, it's the only time in my life I felt like I was walking on air. Like, but the reality set in. And I said, you know, not for nothing. Uh oh, low battery warning. Oh, no. All right. That's okay. All right. So I, I said, yeah. um, I said, not for nothing, but, you know, I was making more money teaching with 60 schools and 15 teachers, a thousand, 1,500 students. It was a big thing. And they didn't really have much to offer to sustain my family. So, you know, I, I didn't take the offer. I came home and I kept teaching. But a little while later, I came out with a second CD, this one right here, and it's called Vacation. How's that picture? Any good? There you I don't go. Know. Yeah. Yeah, that's All good. Right. Mm -hmm. Vacation. I wrote this album around uh, 1999, around, I think we recorded it in the early 2000s. And I had some really good players too, thank the Lord. Uh, I, you know, good people played with me. A guy named Nick Franciosa on saxophone, who was really like a Michael Brecker type of sax player and others. And that became a very big album. Um, we used to have it in the stores. Back then, if you wanted to promote your album, you went to CD World or you went to Sam Goody and you said, I have, I'm a local musician, I have an album. And they would give you a slot under and pay. They'd give you a spot, parts. yeah. Right, in the bin, in the bin. And so nice. it was really a thrill to go you know, to Sam Goody's and go in the bin and see, you know, I think I gave him like five CDs. I think like I sold one, you know, <laughs> but, but it was still a trip. Just like today on our record, uh, On the Edge, when, when I can ask, you know, Apple to play one of the songs and it plays, it comes up on your, on your uh, radio. Yes, so, On um, the Edge Interplay there, that On the Edge Interplay, you just And let's one more time. This how, might, how do you, this, how this do you ask them? 
well, this is certainly the best recorded and most smoking album I ever played on. With you, Joe Navallo, and myself, I think we made we made a hell of a record. It's 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 certainly jazz fusion. It's it's certainly a lot of up tempo stuff and, and a beautiful song named Joe that you wrote. And um, I just want you to know, by the way, that I'm putting all this stuff up on a place called Broad Jam. And Broad Jam is an opportunity place, you know. Mm -hmm. And and they post, we need we need a song for this. We need a song for NASCAR. We need a song for this. Right. And so all three. I have songs from all three of my albums are all on Broad Jam. About, gee whiz, I'd say about 50 tunes all, all together. Wow. So um, I'm looking to make a living selling the music that I wrote all my life. Thank you very much once again for tuning in to Into the Mind of Music. Please click the subscribe button and ring the bell if you'd like to be notified when my podcasts come out generally every Monday and Wednesday. I'll have my Linktree link in the description. You can click on that and get to all my social media. Until next time, peace, love, and music for all.